In this video, we're looking at how exchange rates are determined. In terms of the syllabus, we're looking at this dot point here. So the determination of exchange rates, including fixed, flexible and managed rates. In terms of how exchange rates are determined, there are three main ways that we focused on. One is the floating or flexible exchange rate. This is where market forces, demand and supply interact and determine the value of a currency. Now this is what's known as a clean float. If we intervene, the float gets dirty. The second type of exchange rate determination is a fixed exchange rate where the value of a currency is fixed and the government or the central bank tries to support that and keep the currency at that level. The third type of exchange rate determination is a little bit like a, um, let's say, a Hannah Montana style approach, where it's the best of both worlds. So we've got a floating exchange rate for most of the time, and then some intervention to keep it uh, a little bit higher or bring it a little bit lower. But we'll take a look at that in time. If we go to a floating exchange rate, think market forces, demand and supply, intersecting, interacting, and that will determine the value of a country's currency. So this equilibrium will change um, whenever demand and supply change, which could be every minute. If you think about the speed of Forex trading, Forex trading, sorry, that it happens every second. So this value can move around quite a lot in short periods of time. Now just remember when we've got a floating exchange rate, okay, so demand is represented by inflows into the balance of payments. So people who want to buy Australian dollars to buy Australian exports to invest in Australia, right? So demand is represented by inflows into the balance of payment. Now supply is represented by outflows from the balance of payments. So all the people who wish to invest overseas or to buy imports those outflows will require people to sell Australian dollars and buy foreign currency. So, floating exchange rate. This is courtesy of Dixon and Marnie. Um, if we look at it here, we've simply got demand and supply where they intersect. Bang, that's equilibrium. Here it is at 80 cents. One Australian dollar will get us 80 US cents. Um, price is one currency in terms of another and the quantity of the Australian dollar, well, that's the quantity here under a floating system. Okay, if we have a fixed exchange rate, here the RBA or the government officially sets the exchange rate. The RBA or the government says, this is what our currency is worth. So no market forces at play. So the RBA and the government maintain this level of the currency by buying or selling the Australian dollar to keep the Australian dollar at its desired level. So if they buy Australian dollars, oh, sell foreign exchange, sell foreign exchange, buy Australian dollars, right? They're trying to dirty the float to keep it at a certain level. To maintain a fixed exchange rate, though, the RBA or government would need a large reserve of foreign exchange to do this. So to keep it at a certain level, let's say you want to keep it higher than it would normally be, well, then the RBA or the government, they're having to sell huge amounts of currency, um, huge amounts of foreign exchange to buy the local currency and push up its value. So the risk here is that the RBA or the government runs out of foreign exchange and they have no more money or no more foreign currency to sell in order to buy the Australian dollar and push its price up. If we're looking at a fixed exchange rate, you can see this graph also from Dixon and Marnie that you can see here that the market rate is one Australian dollar buys 80 US cents, but the government or RBA prefer it to be at 90 cents. So they are buying um, Australian dollars, selling foreign currency to push it up to that higher artificial level. So that is a fixed exchange rate. If we look here, our final one is a managed exchange rate. Now, a managed exchange rate, like I said, in a fairly tortured analogy, is like the Hannah Montana of exchange rates. So it's the best of both worlds. So under a managed exchange rate, the currency is mostly floating, but that should say from time to time, the government will intervene, fighting against fluctuations they don't want. 
For example, the RBA might jump in, dirty the float, sell Australian dollars, and reduce the value of the exchange rates, which would make exports more competitive. So we're generally floating, but from time to time, the RBA jumps in, dirties the float, and either reduces the value of the currency or increases it. It's not fixed, it's not flexible, it's managed. Okay, here is a question from the 2013 HSC. Um, it's part of a short answer question, worth four marks. So outline an advantage and disadvantage of moving from a fixed exchange rate to a floating exchange rate system. So, based on the information from this video, have a go at this question.